So, until we get new story missions, we're continuing on our tour of the patrol zones and side quests of Star Trek Online by heading into the borders between Klingon, Romulan and Federation space, beginning with the crossing into Klingon Imperial territory with the Arcanis sector and the neutral planet of Agilon Prime. Originally a Federation colony, it was attacked in 2373 by Klingons in the short-lived war preceding the Dominion War. In the lore of Star Trek Online, the Empire has since expanded to cover this world again, although now it is declared neutral. However, it was still the site of several skirmishes and supposedly there's a PvP game mode to enter here, but it never loaded for me. So the next stop is Arcanis IV, the first Klingon colony world we can pass by. There was a Federation research outpost here in the 23rd century, and the site was originally given to the Federation by the Empire. However, in that short-lived prelude war, it was seized by the Klingons and has remained in their territory since. We can pass by the Klingon Starbase, and if you are a Klingon character, this is the location for your fleet's headquarters, so undoubtedly, even if we are allies, we can't just wander into another government's military base. The Gundala system here is home to a series of orbital bases that act as a staging ground for operations along the neutral zone, and the Klingons have subjugated the native inhabitants. We're not allowed to enter as Federation characters without clearance. The Kinthuanza system is used for a shortcut for independent freighters, for slingshot manoeuvres, but it also has a problem with pirates. All is quiet today, however. The Otha system, however, is one that can use our help. Otha 2 is an M-class world that was the subject of a Borg incursion from the Azure Nebula. They expanded in all directions, and in the Klingon direction, this was as far as they made it, and they began to assimilate this planet before being stopped. Much of the planet remains partially assimilated, and recently reactivated with the increase of Borg activity. As a result, researchers from all factions are stuck on the surface, and much is left still to analyse so we can beam down to assist. Now, this actually is a PvP war zone left over from when Star Trek Online focused around the war between the Klingons and the Federation sides, so it's still there as such. While on the planet, we can see much of the former M-Class worlds, wildlife is now barren except for these strange and tall trees with gossamer leaves, metal arches of unknown purpose, perhaps mining equipment, and wrecked Borg structures litter the surface while groups of drones still patrol. In the distant haze of the sky, we can spy larger suspended Borg structures, bases in various stages of activity from dormant to alive. We can rescue some of the research personnel, then we're given a secondary objective. We need to upload a Federation virus to four nodes that will disrupt the Borg further for a while at least, but we have reports that the Klingons have one that can turn the Borg hostile to anything but the Klingon Empire. These Borg consoles are protected by three plasma turrets each, but it's not a big issue here. Either way, we're able to complete our objectives unmolested and return to the Armager. The next system along the route is the Cestus system, which might be a familiar one. It is the site of a Federation colony that was eventually attacked by the Gorn in 2267. The world then became the site of a joint Federation and Gorn colony by the 24th century, or at least one that the Gorn left alone, thanks to treaties, until they were absorbed into the Klingon Empire in 2403. So now it is in Klingon space technically, but still resides at the very cusp of Gorn territory, which I believe is just off of the explorable map. So our next destination is the neighbouring sector block of the Tikchitruch sector, and our first stop is the system with the same name, which I'm not pronouncing again. It is home to ruins from an extinct civilization. Naturally, there's a great deal of interest in parties from the Federation, and now that we are at peace with the Empire, we can explore it. Although, it is one of several beginning points for a multiplayer mission called The Big Dig, which sees us protecting the archaeologists. The Guwok system makes reference to the B. Canis sector block, which no longer exists. Although technically you could say that the systems are still there, just with map revamps over the game's life, it's all been renamed and jumbled about. Still, Gokwok is the site of numerous honour battles for the Klingons, so basically if Klingon houses have issues with one another, then this system is a traditional ground to settle those scores. 
The next zone we can look into is the Ta'ong Nebula, which is home to Klingon colony sites and ongoing efforts that we can assist through assigning officers to do the admin side of things. Come on, Klingons being allied to the UFP is not all bad. We can do your paperwork. The Kegun system marks the first system of the Kronos sector block, and it's an agricultural world that exports to the Empire, but it's also come under attack by the Borg a few decades ago. At the moment, all remains calm, however, so we move on with the next system being Nomad, or its Starfleet moniker, Omicron Leonis. It was named after a cave system on Kronos, but saw use as a ship graveyard for the Imperial fleet. The next system needs no introduction, but it is the Kronos system, capital of the Klingon Empire and homeworld of the Klingons themselves. We cannot land here as a Starfleet ship, but naturally this is their most protected site, and I have a whole video on Kronos, so let's move on. The Nalo system is inhabited by Klingons, however none of the planets on it are M-class, so it's all domed structures. The system is seen as a defensive perimeter to Kronos, and the final system in the Kronos sector is Hedon. Hedon is home to a Klingon listening array that no doubt still spies on the Federation as it did during the war. Unsurprisingly, there's little to do in the Kronos sector block, just as there's nothing to do in the Sol system, and there's very few patrols that need doing here. It is after all the heart of the Klingon Empire. So we leave and make for the neighbouring sector block, the Kitama sector. The first system here is the Maiski system. Kitama is a sector block that spans into the joint space between the Romulans Federation and Klingon territory, and as such you can find all three powers at play here. This Federation system was a colony site in the 23rd century, and now has 3.4 million inhabitants in six major cities. It continues to develop replicator technology, and produces most of the Federation's industrial replicators. Unfortunately, as we enter the system, we receive a distress call from a native patrol ship in the asteroid belt that the Orion pirates are stealing ore supplies from their automated facilities. They go on to say that this ore is practically worthless and not of use, and the only reason that they could be doing this is to disrupt the colony, perhaps in an attempt to force them out with sabotage. Whatever the cause, we can assist. The lighting in this system is amazing though, very dark, which makes the glow of the armor just numerous light sources flare up. Although finding the Orions, however, can be a little challenging, as they are very spread out and we need to find six squadrons across a very large area. However, we eventually do, and then we're free to depart with a message sent. Corvat is next along our route, which is a Klingon world and the site of several negotiations. Curzon Dax worked here in 2289. There used to be a mission here where a scientist was attempting to resurrect the Klingon Augment project, but that it is no longer in the game. Vega is next up. The Class K planet, which is a barren world, although water vapor has been detected. It is a potential site for terraforming if needed, but as of now there are no efforts being made. Entering the system, however, the area is bathed in the orange glow of the Eta Vega star, and despite what the descriptor says on the system, we can see artificial cities are on one of the planets here. Clearly some colonisation efforts are at play, because we also have freighters being harried by Gorn ships. These freighters have been surrounded by mines that will home in should they approach them or flee, while the Gorn circle in getting ready to board it seems or wait for more vessels to arrive. They've trapped their prey, and now they're getting ready to hunt and we need to save those freighter crews. The priority is to get the crew out of there, not engage the Gorn, although we do have clearance to defend ourselves. We get close to the freighter but the Gorn open fire. Despite the aggression from the Gorn, after engaging and defeating a single wing of their ships, we come to the conclusion that there is a riskier but faster and less bloody way to assist. These mines are more than enough for a freighter, but an Odyssey class star cruiser? Barely an inconvenience. 
so we apply full power to our shielding and drive the Armager into the cloud of homing mines, pulling away and allowing them to track us. This frees the ships from their trap, and the freighter is free to slip away while the Gorn round on us. We then slip away without fighting and repeat our power slide on the next few freighters, and every time it works, the Gorn do give chase to us, but that's fine, we can be faster, and once we've saved every civilian vessel we break away from the last Gorn ship and warp out of the system. The next system is the Calfairy system. It is home to twin planets and a B-class star. The smaller planet is a class N methane ice planet, while the larger is a gas giant. It's suspected that the smaller world will eventually succumb to heating until it collapses in the far future. This system, however, is home to a Starfleet base in orbit, patrolled by the USS Bale, a lunar-class starship. We have received a call for assistance, as Norsican raiders are detected inbound and we are the Starbase's reinforcements. The station is a dry dock and repair station designed in the face of operations in the neutral zone, and it was a target during the Klingon Federation War of 2405, however it still stands, and it's a useful installation for maintaining a presence along this border of UFP space. The USS Bale is captained by Captain Martin, who warns us of the incoming attackers. There are three waves of Norsecon Raiders, with the first two waves consisting of multiple vessels, and the last being a single Talon-class battleship. All of these enemies are easily dispatched, although the Bale takes a hefty beating, and the Starbase does suffer some minor damage. Captain Martin thanks us for the assistance, and we make dock at the Starbase to make use of its repair and restock facilities. It's might as well right, it's what it's there for after all. After a couple of days of downtime, we're ready to depart and continue on our next series of missions. The last stops on our journey are quiet ones, as we sling past the Kitama system, the second planet being the namesake for the sector, Kitama of course being the iconic site of numerous peace talks in the past, most notably between the Klingon Empire and Federation of planets, and in online's continuity, it was the recognition of the Romulan Republic as an official state in early 2409. The JFS-47 system is a small system that was first noted in 2256 by astronomer J. Walker Montgomery, and was checked out for the stellar nursery in the area. Again, it's the site of a former mission that no longer exists, in this case the kidnapping of Miral Paris by the Klingon Ambassador Bavat, and the neighbouring Gateway system is off-limits for now, as it houses the Guardian of Forever. It will reside here until sometime between the 26th and 28th centuries, when it will relocate itself away to avoid its misuse due to the temporal wars. But that is the last planet of the Kitama Sector, and next up is the Azure Sector, which has become a major hub of activity since the activation of the Solon A. Dyson Spheres in the days leading up to the Iconian Invasion. Of course this was all covered in the story series, but the Azure Nebula itself has some interesting history behind it too. So, until the next part of the Patrol series, thanks for watching this compilation of smaller missions, and until the next one, thanks again for watching. Goodbye.